Hey YouTube, it's Victoria. I know I haven't done a video in a very long time, but I wanted to start doing a series um, of questions that I get from people um, who ask me questions all the time. I get a lot of emails about different things. People have questions for me. And so I think instead of typing them back, just them, I think I'll start doing videos on it. So I'm going to start the series today and I'll try and do one um, as often I, as I get questions. I would like to do it at least once a week. So people, please send me questions. Um, the first question that I'm going to uh, answer, it comes from Shalita, who sends me emails all the time with questions, which I love. And this question, um, I she sent me this a long time ago and I'm just not answering it. So I'm sorry, Shalita. But this is her question. Um, she said, hey, it's Shalita. I haven't seen you post any videos lately. Hope everything is okay. You know, I always have a million questions on skincare for you, but this question is about becoming an esthetician. What made you become an esthetician? I'm a licensed cosmetologist and thinking about taking some courses on becoming an esthetician. I've been looking for online schools and info, but not having much luck for the area I live. I found one school online for my area. If you can give me any info on becoming an esthetician, I'll greatly appreciate it. Hope to hear from you soon. Okay, so here's my recommendation um, for becoming an esthetician. For me personally, the reason why I decided to become an esthetician and not a cosmetologist is because I always had problem skin, what I consider problem skin. I've always had oily skin. Um, I started noticing problems with my skin when I was about 13. I got the chicken pox, and then after that, my skin just became terrible. Like, it would be super oily. Um, I would break out all the time. Like, it was nothing for me to break out with a huge pimple right on the tip of my nose when I was in high school. It was nothing. Um, super, super, super oily skin. Break out all the time. Always left a mark. I just had problem skin, and... Everything that I would try over the counter, it wasn't working. I went to the dermatologist. They gave me Retin-A. That wasn't working. The only thing that it did was peel my skin. Everything that I tried, it just was not working. Um, and this went on for years. Like, well, you know, all through my teenage years, well into my 20s. I went to esthetician school when I was 28 was when I started. Um, and so basically, I just got tired of dealing with my skin and not knowing what to do with it so I'm like it has to be something that I can do to prevent all of these issues that I'm having okay so initially I, I was really into makeup you know because I was more concerned with covering up my issues instead of fixing them or preventing them so I was really into makeup so I started getting into makeup real heavy learning about how to um, conceal and how to make my eyes look like this or do this and do that. So I got into makeup really heavily, um, started mentoring with this makeup artist in Detroit um, and had like some really good opportunities with her. I had a lot of good experiences. We did makeup for movies, for plays, for um, events, weddings, fashion shows. We did a lot of things. And then I moved from Detroit to Flint, which is about an hour north of Detroit. And I started doing makeup on my own, out, you know, from underneath her, her mentorship. And I started doing it on my own. I would do different events. Um, a girl that I met, she was starting a makeup, I'm sorry, a magazine. So I would do makeup for her and any events that she had. So, you know, it was fun, but I found that a lot of times when I was doing people makeup, young and old, older women, people had terrible skin and they wanted a miracle. They're like, okay, well, you're doing my makeup. Well, I want it to look like this. Like, I want my skin to look like this in this picture. And can you cover this up? Can you do that? And I'm finding that when I'm trying to put makeup on their skin, like their skin is just uneven. It's not smooth. Um... It need to be exfoliated so bad. I mean, it was just a lot of problems. And I found myself talking to them more about their skincare. Like, you know, you need to do this to your skin. Try doing this. Um, steaming in the morning. Just coming up with stuff in them too because their skin was not good. Like, people, you have to have good skin before makeup looks good. You can't go into an old dilapidated house and slap new paint on the walls and think it's going to look like a new house. No, you have to fix the house. You have to fix everything. So, I was like, okay, I like makeup, but 
I really like skincare. Like, I'm really into the health of skincare. So, um, I couldn't go back to school to be an esthetician because with financial aid and all that stuff, like, you have to pay out of pocket because I already had a degree. So, it was all this big thing with money. So, basically, I couldn't afford it out of my pocket. So I was let go from my job and in Michigan they had this program called No Worker Left Behind. And basically this program will pay for two years of school. You can go to school, do basically do whatever you want. They will pay for two years and they pay for everything. So I used that program to go and earn my esthetician license. Um, and that's how I was able to go to aesthetic school because otherwise I would have had to save up the money to do it myself. So that's why I decided to become an esthetician. It was my own problems with my own skin that prompted me to want to learn more about skincare in general. Okay, so my recommendations for selecting um, a school, if you are looking to become an esthetician, my recommendations for selecting a school would be, I have my list here. Um, this is key right here, and I'm finding this out now that I've relocated. I don't live in Michigan anymore. I live in New Jersey. In Michigan, um, it's only a 400-hour requirement to be an esthetician. Here in New Jersey, it's a 600-hour requirement. So even though I'm a licensed esthetician in Michigan, now that I'm in New Jersey, I can't practice here unless I go to a New Jersey school. Or um, I could, I, if I have a license and have worked two years in the field, then I can get my license in New Jersey. But my recommendation would be to look for a school that, that at least has 200 hours if your state requirement is under 600 hours, okay? So like people in Michigan, there are schools in Michigan that offer 600 hour programs. My recommendation would be to um, do that. That way, if you relocate, you can still practice in another state. Most states, 600 is around the norm. Michigan is low. I think Delaware is even lower. It's like 350. But Michigan is one of the states with the lowest number of hours. Most states are requiring 600 or more hours to be an esthetician. So that's my recommendation. Number one, look for a school, if you can, that has 600 hours so that if you do relocate, you can um, get a license in a new state. Unless you plan on staying in the state that you live in and working for two to three years, in that state to get work experience that way when you go to these other states you will be able to prove that hey i've been working these number of years with this whatever four or five hundred hour license i qualify for a license in your state okay so that's number one um number two would be to when you're going to the school and you're talking to the people about enrolling you're talking about their program number two would be to talk to them about the student to teacher ratio in any type of program like cosmetology um, as any of that it's very important to have a low student to teacher ratio because you have to learn how to do these movements I know you're doing effleurage or to poke mint which are massage techniques or you're doing um, you're learning how to drape the client or you're learning how to put a mask on with the breath. You're learning all of these things. You have to learn it by doing it or and having it done to you. So if your class has 20 people and it's one teacher, chances are your teacher is not gonna get around to everybody to really give you that hands-on that you need. Um, you To me, that was one of the uh, deciding factors for me. Like that was a good thing for me to have a low student to teacher ratio. That's very important, really in any school, honestly. Um, Another thing is find out about the instructors. Like, do they, are they teaching the aesthetics course, like, on the side? Is it just, like, something that they're not really into? Because if you're really passionate about it and you really want to learn, you want to learn it from somebody that's just as passionate as you. Because estheticians can really make some good money. Just like we all know that cosmetologists and hairdressers and whatever. People look at those professions as mediocre or, um, less than because they're not it's not a, a per intellectual profession per se but these people can make really good money and they're talented they're artists um and it takes a lot of patience it takes a special type of person to be able to do these things and you can really make money and there are people that are very very passionate about these fields and they can share that knowledge with you because it takes uh, a certain level of knowledge to survive in the field i will say that um so make sure that the teacher is, you know, that, that they're not just doing this on the side. Like, they're teaching massage therapy, and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, Wednesdays, I'll come over here and teach an aesthetics class. Find somebody who's really into it that understands um, 
not just skincare, but ingredients that will teach you all, all the way around. That's important as well. Um, you also want to look at their lab. Ask them, if you're looking at a school, ask them to show you around the lab. You should have a lab. If they say they don't have a lab, walk out the door, go to another school. They should have a lab. Um, you have to practice everything that you're going that you're going to be learning. You have to practice it. At the school that I went to, and I went to a community college in Flint, Michigan. I went to my community college in Flint for people that's from Michigan or whatever. And we had a phenomenal lab. It was just like a spa. You would not even once you walked in, you forgot that you were at a school, at a community college. At that, it was amazing. Um, you want to look at the lab. It should look like a spa. It should have the effect like you should have a front desk you should have a waiting area you should have we had water with lemons and cucumbers in it we had you could call in and make appointments we had a television in the back um we had dressing rooms we had showers we had where we did laundry we had 10 beds um steam machines hot rock massage it was just like going to a regular spot that's important because our teacher, she did not allow us to do anything on a client that came in if we had not had it done to ourselves and done it to another student in the class. So I couldn't perform a hot rock massage on somebody that was coming in requesting it unless I had a hot rock massage done to me so I know what it feels like. And then I had to do one to somebody else so that I understood how to do it naturally before a, a client comes in. And make sure that, that you guys are taking clients from the public because that gives you that experience you want to make sure that you're able to perform these activities and do this stuff on people that you don't know you have to be comfortable with that you have to be comfortable waxing a stranger's underarm or waxing their legs or plucking their eyebrows or waxing their upper lip those things you have to be comfortable with um it should look just like a spot it should have music playing it should look just like a spot okay um what products do they use the school that i went to we use bio elements we use products that you can only find in a professional environment. You can't go in the store and buy these buy uh, bio elements. So, one, you're learning. I'm not saying necessarily that you have to learn like a certain line, but you're learning how to work with a certain line. For example, with the line that we use, you have to know, you really have to do a skincare analysis with each client to find out which of this company's products to use. And they had mixtures, you have to mix stuff together. So it, it taught you to talk to your client, to find out what it is that they're looking for, what are their skincare goals, what problems are they having, why are they there. Because everybody's coming for something, or maybe they're just coming to relax. But sometimes people are coming because they they have rosacea maybe, or they have some blotchy skin, or their skin is really oily, or they're breaking out, or whatever their problem may be. It makes you really sit down and talk to your client and find out what it is, and it puts you in that mind frame and gets you in that habit. Um, make sure that they're using professional products, because these schools can have agreements with lines and they should be able to use professional products so that's one thing that you definitely want to make sure that they're using products that you can't just go into the beauty supply or go into sally's or whatever and purchase yourself you want to make your clients feel like they're coming to you for something special that they can't get anywhere else like you can only get this if you come see me you can't go to the store and buy this and do it yourself at home you can only get it when you come see me okay so that's important um Look around the school as they're showing you around. Look around their department and make sure that they have like publications or they're talking about things, events that's coming up for estheticians. Um, are they talking about any shows? Like we went to a show in Grand Rapids where it was like for all cosmetology students, esthetician students, where we had an opportunity to purchase from directly from vendors. Like I was able to purchase um, my wax pot and wax directly from definitely like i was able to talk to the people that work there and say okay what type of wax should i use i was able to do that um these events go on and students can go to them they're for professionals they're really for people that have their license but the companies like to get their students in there you get a student discount when you go and you get access to the exact same thing there were people there from paul mitchell doing hair um demonstrations it was a lot of stuff and it was only $50 and we went all day. We got hours for being there. 
um, they counted towards our, our um, diploma or our completion hours or whatever. So make sure that they have things like that in their schedule. Ask them about any type of events that they have going on where they allow their students to go to these um, events that's normally reserved for professionals, but students can sometimes go to them. And make sure that they require a uniform. I mean, I don't know if any that don't, but you want to make sure that the school is, is prepping you from the very beginning to keep a professional demeanor, look professional, dress professional. Estheticians wear black on black with a white jacket. They usually wear black on black. So you want to make sure that this is something that they're doing, that they're strictly, like that you're following, that they're making sure that, that you're, you are following it. I know in Michigan, if we didn't have our uniform, we had to have black, top, black plain top black pants, no jeans, you have to wear black tie-up shoes, black socks, maybe white socks, and our white jacket, your name tag. If you didn't have that, you had to go home. and You didn't get your hours for that day. Um, so they were prepping us from the beginning. Like, okay, you're going to be wearing black every day anyway if you plan on doing this for a living. So now is the time to get used to it. Um, and that's really it that I can think of in terms of looking for a school uh, where you want to study aesthetics. It's a very fun field. It's tiring sometimes. Like all day long you're doing facials or back facials or whatever. You can get like physically tired. But I can say that I learned a lot. I will tell y'all this. When I started there, I started in um, a September. September of like 2009, I think. My skin was so broken out. I swear y'all. I had everywhere on my face, it was spots all over my entire face. I had pimples everywhere dark mark it was a mess by the end of the, the program which was december like around christmas i didn't have any more bumps on my face my skin was smoother and i had stopped breaking out and the reason why is because not because of the products that we use per se but because i was getting a facial done every friday every thursday or friday i was getting a facial done and what i'm saying is the reason my skin cleared up is because i was I had started a whole new way of taking care of my skin. It was a deep cleansing. Um, I was giving myself, I was doing steam treatments, uh, basically doing everything that you would go to an esthetician and get done. And I noticed a difference in my skin. So I can definitely attest to what an esthetician does. Um, it does work. If you follow the steps that you will learn in the program, it does work. And I still follow those steps to this day. I still wash, I tone, I steam, I moisture. I do all of that stuff that I learned in class and I've noticed such a sharp, huge difference in my skin. I started to break out a little bit, um, probably like a year after that, but ever since I changed up my regimen and really been sticking to it, I've noticed a big improvement in my skin. Like now, I have on a little bit of makeup, but it's just about rubbed off. But I'm rubbing and you can't see anything. And I'm telling y'all, I had spots that was all over my entire face. They were everywhere. It was a mess. And this was only two years ago. So it does work. Um, taking care of your skin is definitely beneficial. It will help you out. You will thank yourself later as you get older because it's nothing worse than seeing an older woman and their skin just look a mess. Like, I'm telling y'all, from experience, I've touched a lot of women's skin and it was filthy. Like, I wanted to, I don't even want to keep my brush. Like I had to like scald my brushes. It was ridiculous. Um, and this is just people that don't know how to take care of their skin. So it's my thing to talk about skin. I can talk about it all day long. I can always try and tell somebody something they could do to try and help their skin out. I don't know everything by far, but I can definitely offer tips. And I love talking about it because to me it's very, very, very important. Your skin is your largest organ on your body. You have to take care of it. Um, and as you get older, when you don't take care of your skin, as you get older, it shows. And just from dealing with the women that I have, their skin looked a mess. So, not everybody. It was some people I had I talked that I worked with skin were beautiful, but it was some people that I couldn't believe that they was trying to get makeup put on it and thought they was gonna look okay. So, those are my recommendations for people that's um, trying to become an esthetician. Um, I hope they help you guys. Uh, find a school or decide whether or not aesthetics is a good field for you to go into and like I said I want to start this doing this segment is probably like every week so send me questions to victoria at ambrios.com and I'll answer them on video 
and um, hopefully help you guys out with some of the questions that you have, okay? All right, thank you guys for watching so much, and I'll talk to y'all later. All right, bye.